Before we look at the features of ECMAScript 6, we need an environment that supports ECMAScript 6. And from now on, I will simply refer to it as ES6, because that is a lot easier to say. Now, I'm using the term environment because browsers are not the only environments that support ES6. We can use a transpiler, which will convert ES6 code into ES5, so that we can then run it within the browser. And there are many resources that we can use to find out what environments support what features. But probably the most commonly used is this table by Kangax, and I probably probably mispronounced his handle, but I could not find any pronunciation online. Now the big thing about this table is this little disclaimer at the top, that some of these tests represent existence, not functionality or full conformance. So some of these yeses are really noes, because while the feature might exist, there's really nothing there behind it. But you can see that support for ES6 is almost non-existent. Uh, pretty much across the board, except for Firefox and Tracer. Tracer is a transpiler written by Google. So for this course, we are going to use the Tracer transpiler, as well as a Firefox Nightly. The latest Nightly is Firefox 29, and we will go download that here in a minute. But you can see that Chrome surprisingly doesn't have a lot of features implemented. There are some but not really a whole lot. And there's really no surprise that IE doesn't have a lot of features because their development cycle is completely different than Firefox or Chrome. And if you scroll over, you have Opera, which nobody uses, Conquer, which even less people use, and there's also some support for Node and Node Harmony. But as I mentioned for this course, we're going to use Tracer and a nightly build of Firefox. So let's download Firefox first because that's the easier one to take care of. Probably the easiest way to get to the nightly website is to search for Firefox nightly. The first hit in Google is for the nightly build website and then you can download the nightly build here. Now the nightly build is the alpha version of Firefox. So any new feature that's going to be added to Firefox will first appear in the nightly. And because it is alpha software, it is considered unstable. Now it's not going to crash your system or anything like that, but the features that are currently being implemented in the nightly builds, well, there's no guarantee that they are going to work. For example, tonight's nightly might have a feature that works, and then tomorrow night's nightly, that feature might be broken. So, of course, you never want to write production code based upon a nightly build. Now, I should warn you, if you have Firefox currently installed on your computer, if you install the nightly build, it is going to replace your current installation with the nightly build. So, if you want to keep your current version of Firefox, do not install the nightly. Now, you can always go back. If you install the nightly and then you want to reinstall the stable version or the beta or Aurora, or whatever build that you have, you can always go back to whatever build that you had previously. But if you don't want that hassle, do not install the nightly. But if you do, then install based upon your operating system and have at it. Well, let's move on to Tracer. Tracer is Google's ES6 transpiler. And in fact, their description is Tracer is a JavaScript.next to JavaScript of today compiler. This was originally hosted at Google Code, and in fact, if you search for Google Tracer, the first hit is going to be for Google Code. But if you go there, it says to come here to GitHub. So this is now the official repository of Google's Tracer transpiler. And you can use Tracer in one of two ways. You can use it offline, so you can write your ESX code and go ahead and transpile it into ES5 code, and then use that ES5 in the browser, or you can do it at runtime. So you could reference the tracer files and then write ES6 and then inside of the browser, it will transpile there. Now there's a couple of things that we want to look at here. The first are the language features. Now they have an impressive list of features, but some of these are not the features as they are found in ES6. Like for example, promises. In ES6, we have promises, but they are not implemented here in Tracer. In ES6, we have a promise data type. 
And that's not found here in Tracer. There's something completely different. So when it comes to promises or anything else that is not supported within Tracer or Firefox, we are going to use a polyfill if one exists. The other thing I want to show you is the getting started code because what they have listed here is incorrect. You can copy and paste this snippet and you would be disappointed to find that it does not work. In order to find what does work, you have to go to, you can see the final result here, and then view the source. It's basically the same. They reference the two script files for Tracer versus the Tracer file itself. Then there is the boot strap, but then there's another script block that sets tracer.options.experimental equal to true. So we will need to do that. And also the script type is module here as opposed to text slash tracer. That's another thing, this no longer works. So we're going to use a boilerplate HTML file throughout this course. Anytime that we use tracer, it's going to start with this HTML file in that we reference the two necessary script files. Then we have a script block setting tracer.options.experimental to true. And then we can test if this works by creating another script block and we can set the type equals to module. And then we could do something like let foo equals bar and then alert foo. So if we go to the browser, which I already have a tab of this, we can refresh and we will see that in the alert box. And now that we know what environments that we are going to use in this course, we can get started looking at ES6 in the next lesson.